Hello and welcome to Nothing But The Truth. How does the Congress party respond to its defeat in Maharashtra and Haryana? And does Rahul Gandhi have the capacity and ability to bring the Congress party back to power? Those are the two key issues I shall explore today with Congress General Secretary Dick Vijay Singh. Mr. Dick Vijay Singh, after your defeat in the national elections in May, as General Secretary of the Congress party, how do you respond to this second, even more depressing defeat in Maharashtra and Haryana? If you see uh, in 2004 and 2009 elections, once we formed the government in Delhi, the hangover of the Lok Sabha elections carries on at least for some time. And that is where we won Maharashtra and Haryana in 2004 and 2009. So I think uh, we were expecting uh, not very good results because one had a 15-year anti-incumbency, the other a 10-year But were you expected to come third in both states? In fact, in Haryana, you won't even be the official leader of the opposition. And to be honest, yeah. you'll only get that position in Maharashtra if the BJP doesn't have an alliance with Shiv Sena. So did you expect to do as badly as this? No, on the contrary. If the BJP, Shiv Sena combined, then we'll have a leader of opposition uh, Absolutely. position. Absolutely. So did you expect to do as badly as this? No. In fact, uh, if you see, uh, even in 99, when we formed the government, we were fighting separately, uh, NCP and Congress party. We were in the range of 75 to 80 seats. This time, of course... Uh, uh, You're down to 42 in Maharashtra. We were not prepared also. We were th uh, in those seats which were traditionally NCP seats, we were not prepared. In Haryana, we were expecting... Uh, we were not expecting BJP to jump to number one. We were expecting the fight will be between INLD and Congress. That was unexpected. So are you disappointed? Naturally, yes. But then, of course, this is democracy. One has to take up the challenge. Beyond being disappointed, having been in power in one state for 15 years and the other for 10, is this an upsetting and difficult to take result? See, Karan, I would say that the only thing permanent in, in a democracy is change. So changes would always come. Uh, did you put this question to BJP? when they lost 2004-2009 election. Every political party has to go through it. So you're saying to me that this is a fact of life. In democracy, you will win, you will lose. There's Absolutely. no use getting upset. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. One has to take these knocks if you're in politics. As Mrs. Indira Gandhi told Mr. Nakhwar Singh Ji once, what you need is a thick skin. You've had a whole week to reflect. In your eyes as a general secretary, what do you think is the explanation for your party performing so poorly? You see, these ups and downs do come in politics. So the Congress party has faced these, uh, these lows even earlier. We have to put our act together. We have to reinvent. No, but that's how you get out of the problem. First yes. tell me, what do you think is the explanation for doing so badly? Well, I think we delivered on our election promises. But probably then people get fed up. There's a, something called fatigue, voter fatigue. So I think the voter fatigue got better of us. Is it just voter fatigue? Both your governments in Maharashtra and Haryana had a reputation for being involved in corruption and scams. Do you think the perception that these were corrupt governments is something that you paid a price for? Karan, the, Mr. Bhupender Huda was the chief minister for 10 years. Is there any case against him? Has he violated any law? Has any opposition leader, except for speaking on, uh, against him in rallies, if they, had any, if they had any evidence, even a bit of evidence, why did they not uh, go to the court? Evidence and, is one and, thing. And also at the same time, Mr. Prithviraj Chauhan, there is, there is nothing against him. So you're saying the image of corruption, which was so widespread regarding both governments, has not been in some way partly responsible for the defeat? You're really saying to me that it didn't matter? No. The perception may be there. We, we probably could not uh, uh, remove that perception. You know, it's very interesting. I'm asking you, I'm inviting you to be open and frank and thoughtful. And when I ask you, what do you think went wrong? Beyond identifying fatigue, you can't think of anything else. And people will say that, is this a case of a Congress party that doesn't want to face the writing on the wall, which simply says this is routine, this is what happens in democracies, parties win, parties lose. I'm inviting you to look deeper to try and understand what was the malaise that actually brought okay. you down. Okay. Karan, let us talk on statistics. In 2004, what was the position of Haryana and what is the position of Haryana in 2014? It has done exceedingly well on every front. 
health, education, uh, Why everything. then are you battered to third Power. position? Why this, then this are you is, battered to third these position? These are the vagaries of democracy. That's all? That's Absolute, the only explanation? Also at the same time, some of our top leaders, like Mr. Chaudhary Birender Singh and other leaders, Rao Indrajit Singh, they ditched us. So the vagaries of democracy, fatigue and top leaders deserting you is what's responsible as far as you're concerned for the shattering defeat in and Haryana. Of, and of course, we, we have to introspect ourselves also. Where That's what I'm inviting you to do. Begin that introspection with me. Where did you as a party go wrong to result in coming third in Maharashtra, third in Haryana? No, as far as Maharashtra goes, I think uh, we uh, had a, a, a good tenure. Again, going back on statistics, Maharashtra had done exceedingly well on all front. But why did you then come to the shattering defeat? But 41 this, this, seats is all you're left with. But Karan, as I told you, democracy means change. I put it to you again. There was a series of corruption scams that the Maharashtra government was accused of. The irrigation scam, the PWD scam, the medical exam scam, the toll scam. All these, None of those all these scams, Karan, has BJP, Shiv Sena, even filed one case well, give them in time. the low No, file. no, I'm, I'm told, uh, in, as an opposition party, as an opposition party, in, instead of making vague, about, vague allegations, why did they not go to the court? I'm not saying about them going to court. I'm asking you, did this image of scam, this image of corruption affect your standing with the people? Well, maybe yes. I can't really say that. Did the perception that Robert Vadra, Sonia Gandhi's son-in-law had been the beneficiary of many questionable decisions by the Huda government as a result of which his firms and companies had made windfall profits. Did that perception damage your standing and cost you votes in Kar Haryana? Karan, I have always said when asked this question, give me one instance where Mr. Robert Vadra has violated any law of the land. Has he violated any rules? Mr. Ch has he acquired Mr. this Arun property? He has already indicated that it's quite possible that a case will be investigated against Robert Vatra. He said that there is a prima facie grounds for doing so. Now, let's leave that aside. I'm simply asking you a different question. I'm not going into the facts. I'm saying, did that perception of corruption damage you? And I find it very strange that you don't even wish to accept that the perception of corruption went against you. Robert Vatra has been given a clean chit by the High Court and other courts, oh, right. even Supreme Court. Now, at the same time, it, it, when you talk of perception, perception may be there, and Congress Party may be probably, uh, probably we have not been able to sort of remove that perception. But the fact remains that where are the, where is the proof? Has that perception cost you votes? Is it responsible at least partly, if not significantly, for these defeats in Haryana and Maharashtra? Could be, yes. You know, Yogendra Yadav writing in the Indian Express says that whenever the Congress party's vote share falls below 20%, you've never recovered. He cites as proof what's happened in UP, in Bihar, in Tamil Nadu, in West Bengal. Now in Maharashtra, your vote share has fallen to 17.9%. In Haryana, it's teetering at 20.6%. Are you in danger what does he have of to getting what eliminated? Does he has to, what does he have to say about the less than 20% votes of no. BJP in other states? M Mr. Divya is saying... You're not answering a question by asking a question about another party in response to my question. Let's talk about Congress. I'm asking you, are you worried, as many analysts are, that your vote share has fallen so low, you might be eliminated as a major player in Maharashtra? It's not that, Karan. You know, Congress has faced worse defeats. We have to now rethink, reinvent, and go back to the peak, go back to the basics. How do you rethink and reinvent? What does that involve? That involves setting up a Mr. Antony Committee report, which the report has come in, and that on that basis, the Congress President and the Vice President will call a meeting of the Working Committee and take decisions. Antony Committees have been set up every time Congress has suffered a defeat. The reports are very rarely made public, if at all. I know an Antony Committee report was set up after May. The report is with the Party President. It hasn't been made public. Share with me, if you can, if you will. What does it say? I have not seen it. So even you haven't seen it? No. Who has seen it in the party? The members who have drafted the report and the Congress President and the Vice President maybe. That's it? That's it. So what purpose did that report serve if it hasn't been because shown to it, General it, Secretaries it, like you? It, it, is, it is a report to the Congress President.
Now she has to, to take a call. She's had that report, if I recall correctly, for almost two months. But she has been busy with the elections also. But has she done anything about that report? No. Ask, I will, I, I really can't say because whenever the time is correct, she will take a decision. It doesn't suggest that she's handling this matter with great alacrity and emergency or immediacy. There is a timing for every decision. Well, no doubt there is. But if you keep delaying it, then it gets a bit too late. The honeymoon period of Mr. Modi continues for some time. It's continued for five months now. If you yeah. don't act and you don't resurrect yourself, and I'm using that word deliberately, the honeymoon for Mr. Modi will continue. Your failure six, is six giving months. him more time. Six months. Let the six months be over. So miraculously, after six months, Congress will get its act together. Absolutely. We'll do our best. In the meantime, would you accept that today, the undisputed dominant national party is the BJP? Obviously, yes. And you also accept that when you look at the situation in the states, today Congress has eight state chief ministers and after winning Maharashtra and Haryana, BJP will have seven. But the problem is by the middle of 2016, if BJP wins Jharkhand, Bihar and perhaps Assam, their tally will go up to ten, yours will come down to five. The disparity between Congress and BJP is going to grow over the next few years. During 94-96 Karan, our tally had come down to Two. Only Kerala and Madhya Pradesh. You could get very close to that again. No. But we, we came back with 14 to 14. So we always bounce back. Don't write us off too early, Karan. You know, you're hoping you'll bounce back. I put it to you that today the low that you're reaching and the low that you could reach by 2016, 2017 poses the biggest challenge Congress has faced since independence. Of course, independence. it's a very big challenge. The biggest since independence? It's, one, it's, it's a very big challenge. In fact, it's even worse, and the situation you face is even worse compared to 1971, because A, 1977. You, I beg your pardon, 1977, because A, the seats you're left with are far fewer, therefore the hole that you have to climb out of is much deeper, but more importantly, you don't have Indira Gandhi, and by 2019, Sonia Gandhi will be almost 73. Don't forget, in 1977, both Indira Ji and Sanjay Ji had lost the election. In 2014, Sonia Ji and Rahul Ji both have won the election. Yes, but please remember in 1977, Indira Gandhi in 1980 was just 62 years old. Yes. Sonia Gandhi in 2019 will be just a couple of months short of 73. Well, age does matter. But then, don't forget Mr. L.K. Adwani, don't forget Dr. Manmohan Singh, don't forget Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee. But the difference in age between the voter of India and the leader of the Congress well, is going to be a, recent. That, that's the reality which we have to face. P. Chidambaram in an interview yesterday happily accepted, readily accepted that morale is very low in your party. Obviously with the results who would be very happy. How low is low? Give me some sense of how, how your party no, We are all speak. concerned, definitely concerned. Are you worried that your party leadership is not acting as fast and as speedily and as effectively as it should? No. I think I have said what I had to say just immediately after the Lok Sabha elections that we have lost this election in the war of perception. We have to be more aggressive. We have, we, our leadership has to be heard more, seen more in this age of 24 into 7 media. Have you said this to the leadership? I have said it publicly and said, to, said this to the, to the leadership also. What response did you get? Well, of course. Uh, they heard me out. And? They will act. How do you know? Let's see. But five months have gone by and they haven't acted. Let them choose their timing. But is time on their side? Certainly on Rahul's side. Well, only in the sense that he's 44, that's all. Yes. In no other way. That's, 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 that's uh, saying a lot. Are you disappointed by the fact that the leadership hasn't acted faster and more decisively in the last five months? Let them choose their timing, Karan. You're happy to sit and wait while they virtually do nothing? No, they will certainly do. We have got full hopes. Hope or faith? Hope and faith both. Mr. Zikiri Singh, let's take a break at that point. When I come back, I want to talk about Rahul Gandhi, the one man in whom your faith vests, the one man who you hope has the capacity and the ability to bring Congress back to power. We'll be back in a moment's time. Don't go away.
Welcome back to Nothing But The Truth and an interview with Congress General Secretary Dick Vijay Singh. Mr. Dick Vijay Singh, let's come to Rahul Gandhi. In a comment to Rajdeep Sardesai in his forthcoming book, you said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Rahul is making a mistake by not taking up the challenge. How serious a mistake is Rahul Gandhi making? Well, he would take the challenge, I'm sure. But he hasn't up till now. Well, yeah, as I said earlier, let him choose his timing. Absolutely, but I'm asking you a slightly different question. You said to Rajdeep for that book that Rahul is making a mistake by not taking up the challenge. How serious is that mistake? It was a, in a context of him taking over the leadership of the parliamentary party, uh, Congress parliamentary party in Lok Sabha. This was set in that context. So Rahul made a mistake by not accepting the leadership of the Congress party in the Lok Sabha after the May elections. That is my view. And in handing the leadership to Kharge, a man whose parliamentary experience is limited to one term, has Congress failed to put its best foot forward? Don't forget, Kharge has had more than eight terms in the assembly. But by he's been leader of opposition. He's a minister. I accept minister. that. But my question is a different one. I'm saying by not taking the job himself and putting Kharge there, has Rahul ensured that Congress hasn't put its best foot forward? I can't say that. After the choice was left to the Congress president, and she chose Kharge. So the mistake was made by the Congress president. Not a mistake. It's not a mistake, but the people. The, the Congress workers wanted uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi to be the, the leader. This was the public, the, the, the general mood of the Congress party. Was Rahul willing to take the job? Is it just that his mother chose someone else? I don't think he was uh, keen to take the job. He was reluctant? He was reluctant, yes. So his mother responded to his reluctance? No, when someone is not ready, you can't force him. By only addressing six rallies in Maharashtra and four in Haryana, in contrast to Mr. Modi's grand total of 38, has Rahul Gandhi, in a sense, compounded the mistake? Well, Mr. Narendra Modi is on the campaign mode, even now. He is a great mm -hmm. event manager, like Mr. Al Kairwani has said. But Rahul Gandhi needed to be on a campaign mode in an election. You can't fail to be on a campaign mode when you're fighting an election. Things are different, uh, Karan. You know, Public rallies have become redundant in politics But that's now. not what I'm talking about. I'm asking you a different question. I'm saying by only addressing six rallies in Maharashtra and four in Haryana, has Rahul Gandhi compounded the mistake that you admitted he no, had I, made no, by not no, taking no, up the challenge? No, no I, don't, I don't think so. I, don't, I won't put it in that context. But the fact remains that today, in today's 24 into 7 media exposure, public rallies have become redundant. Only those people who, whom you bring to the rallies are, so how are, many the, are rallies, the, is the audience. So how many rallies or how few the rallies Rahul addresses is irrelevant? It, is, it, is, it doesn't make a difference. It is the public perception created in the last five years what matters. Let me rephrase my question. Should Rahul have played a bigger role in the Maharashtra and Haryana campaign? He should play a bigger role in national politics. He should be seen more, heard more, he should address more uh, than what he's doing at the moment. Why is Rahul failing to take up this challenge? Why is he failing to play a more decisive role, a bigger role? Well, that is his choice. You can't force a person. Undoubtedly, but no one who wants to be leader of the Congress party, no one who sees it as his responsibility to bring that party back to power, does it the way Rahul is doing. Well, let him Choose his own timing, Karan. I think he has time on his side. Let him choose his own timing. Let me ask you this. What makes you so sure Rahul Gandhi has what it takes to bring Congress back to power? Or what I have seen of him, I think he has it in him. W what is it that he has? What is this the, quality? The, the capacity to fight back. But he's not doing any fighting at the moment. He would. But it's very strange. You talk of a capacity to fight back, but he's not displaying that capacity. So, does the capacity exist? It does. Or what little I know of him. I'll tell you why people doubt it. On Sunday, when the Maharashtra and Haryana elections results were coming out, Rahul chose to go to Vishakha Patna. So what? 
it's not a question of so what. If, what Showing what, what, sympathy is a very good thing. I'm saying that the perception in the eyes of the public was that he was running away from facing up to defeat. He did. did he send? He did. He reacted in, in Vice, Vice, uh, on, on election results. Did he send the wrong message, no, the wrong signal? No, Karan. I, I, I strongly object to that. He, what, what, what could he have done? On the day the results were coming of Maharashtra Haryana in Delhi, mm -hmm. I think he did what he did was the best. He went. He was among the people leaders, who were the victims of cyclone. Leaders know that when bad news is going to hit, you need you need to put up a brave front. You need to face it squarely. What you could don't be, run away to Vishakhapatnam. What could to be do a, something what else? could be a braver way to face this than to be among the victims? Let me quote to you something that you said to the Indian Express on the 30th of August. You said. The unfortunate part is a 63-year-old leader attracts the youth, while a 44-year-old leader cannot attract them. And I could put not. In, could not. Okay, could not attract them. Yes. I put it to you, that's either because Rahul Gandhi is not a natural leader, or because he doesn't appeal to young India, or maybe for both reasons. As I said earlier, it is a perception war, and the perception war we lost. Rahul Gandhi is losing it as well personally. Well, he has, uh, as I said, age on his side, let him work on it. But remember, the older he gets, the less he's youthful, and the longer he continues to be perceived as a man who's failing, the more difficult it is to turn that perception around. You are right to a certain extent, but then let, let him choose his own timing and please give him some space. Well, you keep saying let him choose his own timing. You know, he's been an MP since 2004. He's been a general secretary since 2007 or 2008. He's been your vice president since January 2013. When is the right time going to come to show he's got leadership qualities in him? Well, he's been able to uh, bring internal democracy in the youth cons and the, and the NSUI student wing, NSUI. And now he's, he's trying to bring it in the Congress party. If seriously what, what he seriously are you believes, seriously telling me what? that the Youth Congress and the NSUI are hugely different bodies as a result of what Rahul's done, because no one else recognizes that. No one may, but the fact remains that we have elected bodies in every assembly and parliament sector in the country today. Even the so-called primary system that he set up for 13 or 14 chosen constituencies for the May elections didn't happen when we went to polls in Maharashtra and Haryana. He gave it up for that. He's not very consistent. No, no he, he may have given up on that. The fact remains that he believes, strongly believes in internal democracy in the party functioning, number one, and empowerment uh, at, the, at, the, at the lowest level. And I think he's working to, the, to his end. Uh, Why is it that your party today is so demoralized that P. Chidambaram readily admits it, you readily admit it in part one? Why is it your party so demoralized if Rahul has the capacity to take you back to power? Why doesn't Rahul convince at least his party, don't worry, I'm your leader, I will bring you back to power. Why can't he do that? He would. What do you mean, would? When? When the time comes. When is the time going to come? We're going around in circles let, like let little the, children. Let, let the honeymoon be over. It seems to me that the one thing that you find difficult to accept is that Rahul hasn't got those qualities needed to lead the Congress out of the wilderness back to power. And all you can say is, wait for the time to come. That's your wait statement. Wait for the time to come. That's your statement, not mine. What does Rahul need to do or say to convince the Indian public that he has the talent and skill to be Prime Minister and they should believe him and trust him. He should go back to the basics, go okay. back to the people. In what way? What does going back to the people mean? Did you see 77, 80, how Mrs. Indira Gandhi and Sanjay Gandhi went to the people? Have you said this to Ram? Yes, I have. What was his response? He accepts it. When does he plan to do it? Well, if you see 77, 80 period also, it took Mrs. Indira Gandhi six to nine months to to, to act as they did. Indira Gandhi showed the country what enorm enormous determination, courage and willpower she had with Belchi, right? She was fighting in Azamgarh for Mohsina Kidwai, even if Mohsina Kidwai didn't win. Did she won? Why are we not seeing... She, she won. Why are we not seeing Rahul Gandhi you will respond see the same now. way? When? Don't, don't underestimate the willpower and determination of Mrs. Sonia Gandhi and her son. How much time does Rahul have to prove to the country he has the talent you keep saying you've seen before the country decides to write him off and it becomes too late? Writing anyone off in politics, I think, is not correct. But how much time does he have before public opinion says 
he hasn't got it. Well, there are innumerable examples where people have lost and not been winning and suddenly they come on the center stage. Mr. Zikvita Singh, you keep saying time is on his side. Let me quote to you what the Times of India on Diwali in their lead editorial of the day said about Rahul Gandhi. Step aside, Rahul, else Congress's decline into irrelevance is a foregone conclusion. If a paper as important as the Times of India is telling Rahul Gandhi to step aside, isn't that a clear sign it's already too late? Well, I don't know who wrote that uh, editorial. Presumably the editor. They go out in the name of the editor even if they're not signed. It's the leader. The leader is the paper's opinion. It was the main leader on Diwali. Well, Diwali, by the way. Well, they, they Step be, aside, that, Rahul. That may, that may be Times of India's gift Absolutely. To, to, to Mr. Rahul Gandhi. If the and, of course, and, and, and Mr. Arnab Goswami was also a gift of Times of India to the, Rahul Gandhi. It's the widest selling newspaper maybe yes. in the country. Maybe yes. And possibly one which maybe is the yes. most highly thought of. They have says their, step aside. They have their own opinion, which I don't agree. There's a real danger the rest of the country would agree. Well, that's their choice. We have to go back to the basics and fight for the people. So Digvijay Singh is telling me yes. that Rahul Gandhi will lead Congress back from Absolutely. the wilderness. Absolutely. I, I have full faith in him. Mr. Digvijay Singh, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.